and the cash registers. No. And uh, <laughs> mainly though, because like when I when I first heard a backing track, and I started singing to it, imagining this like you know underwater love business going on. Dumb. Yeah, I imagined like three three women, although they're Amazonian. <laughs> I, imagine, I imagine that all the time as well. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, and then and then suddenly like about a year and a half later, Levi's do this ad and there's mermaids and then this guy falls in the water and he was the model that I always thought was really yeah. very tasty as well. And then suddenly he's in there as well and it's just like synchronicity. Do you know? It's a bit spooky. But you know like the day when you find out, right, it is going to be us doing the Levi ad. Yeah. What is that like? Because I mean like every band, I mean it's almost like it's almost a guarantee of success. If Levi's choose you to do like the music yeah, yeah. for one of their their, their, their commercials, it, it is almost a guaranteed hit. I mean, what was the day when you were like, we got a Levi dad? Well, it was <laughs> sort of like that, but we couldn't say that because it it's not sure. And if it is sure, you can't tell anyone because then it won't happen. So it's yeah. like this big secret. So, you know, it's a bit difficult, you know. Yeah. But um, at the same time, it was good because we were all a bit worried when we first signed. We had this image in our heads of if we did really make it, would people be knocking on our doors wanting to know all our life secrets, you know, bribing our mates, you know, <laughs> telling all the, all the juicy bits. And it's like, with Levi's, it meant that we didn't have to sell ourselves too much. It's just yeah. the song just went all over the world yeah. and, and we sort of kept quiet for a bit. All right, and now here's the big question. How many countries did you get to number one in? Well, um, really, Italy. Italy. Italy, they oh, love it. will be one then. Yeah, and, <laughs> um, they love it out there. Yeah, and it will be number one in other places too. But that was, in, yeah. yeah, but that was actually a track called Mr. Gorgeous and Miss Curvaceous. Ah, oh, right. Now, Mr. Gorgeous, which hasn't been... First of all, tell us, because that was your second release, right? Yeah. Tell us how come it hasn't been released over here, because there is quite an interesting story that I think all that lot should know about. Well, um, there was a fear that because Radio 1 didn't put it on the playlist, then it wouldn't really make it because I'm they gonna are. Stop you there. I'm going to stop you there. Why didn't Radio One put it on their playlist? Because um, they thought it was too different to Underwater Love. You know, Underwater Love. There's a Brazilian bird. You know, people know where they are. So, you know, it's a bit. You know, mermaids and all that. And then suddenly, Mr. Gorgeous yeah. is in English and it's got a guitar. You know, and it's a bit like that. You know, and it's like completely different. So they thought it's too different. So Radio One have this power, right? That says because basically, I mean, and this is for everybody watching as well. If, if you don't get on that playlist, basically you're in big boo poo, to coin a phrase, aren't you? Because, like, you know, I mean, that's what, you know, 90, a lot, a, a huge amount of people that listen to radio and buy records listen to radio. And so if you don't get on that playlist, you, you, you're not going to get heard. Yeah, I mean, people are being, um, you know, deprived of hearing new sounds. Do you know what I mean? And it's, um, and it's a shame because I think. How, how are people going to know what's out there if they're, if they're already, like, there's this filtering system that says, you want Britpop, you will have Britpop, you know. Yeah. People need to hear other stuff. Absolutely. Now, before we start talking about the new single, um, I want to find out a little bit more about the band as well, yeah. okay? So, obviously, you're the, you're the babe at the front, um, and the rest of the guys aren't here. How long have you been together, and what made you decide that you wanted actually to be a little bit of a singer mate? Well, Tell us your life story. <laughs> Where do you live? Can I come and live with you? <laughs> uh, well, um, we've all been together about two years. Um, and uh, th we've all got this love of Brazilian music, so that's sort of the common You're half, you are actually half yeah, Brazilian yeah. as well. I was born in Brazil, but I, and I came here when I was eight. My mum's English. And uh, so we've got this love of Brazilian music because it is just music from the heart, and it hits you here, it hits you everywhere. I mean, I started singing really because I spent six months with my father when I was about 15 and met Brazil, met Rio, and that's when I was very shy before, you see, and then when I went there, I suddenly realised <laughs> like, who I was. Like, I'm going to believe that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was, God, I was like, so I'd go redder than that, just like anything, just like, Fwah. Don't touch the knob. <laughs> Don't touch your knob. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay. Don't touch it. Now, I'm going to have to actually bring this one up because I, I think it's an amazing story. Um, Elton John's tribute to Princess Diana yeah. was number one all over the world, except... In Italy. Because? They're bellissimo. <laughs> no, 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 because, because yeah, Mr. Gorgeous and Miss Carvacious, they, they bought that. She kept them off number one. Now, obviously, I mean, there's still hundreds of records sold, so yeah, it's yeah. great, and loads of money still goes into the fund, but you were more popular than that track, which is just incredible. How did that make you feel? 
Well, it was rather nice. Yeah, it was nice. And um, I mean, Lady. Oh, it was bloody lovely. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't about Lady Di. It no, was just about yeah. you know getting new music in, and and you know we're going to do a lot of tracks for charity in the future, and we'll give it all to charity. Well done. <laughs> All right, now tell us a little bit about the new single. First of all, you're going to have to, you, you're going to have to tell me what it's called, right? Because um, I can't quite get me tongue round it, as the actress said to the bishop. Well, I heard you say it quite nicely earlier, so I think you should try it again. Oh, okay. Uh, Basa? Nah, shit. Nah. <laughs> no, it's Jogabasa. Jogabasa. Uh, come on, more. I'm starting to melt. You know, like that advert where it's like, you know, uh, the ice begins to melt. I'm starting to feel like a little bit of a limp piece of lettuce um, hearing you say that. Can you just say what it's called again? God, can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Now, I'm going to ask you a couple of weirder questions now. Right. If you could see yourself as a piece of confectionery to be purchased from your local sweet shop, what piece of confectionery do you think that would be, Nina? Uh, Turkish Delight. And why is that? <laughs> Have you been asked this before? That was an instant answer. Um, no, I, c I can't say that about myself, can I? I don't know. Do you see? Now look, the new single, which we're going to see the whole video of now, is out on the 24th of November. Rush out and buy it because Radio 1 are going to play it. <laughs>
I'm Nina from Smoke City and you're watching Rock Mania.